Hey guys, this is Anthony Morganti from anthonymorganti.com and this is episode 8 of Learn Adobe Photoshop Elements and I'm using Elements 12 but as you know I started this series using Elements 11 and everything I do today is applicable in uh, Elements 11 or 12 so you don't have to worry about uh, me showing you something that you can't do if you're using Elements 11. What we're going to do today is we're going to um, cover adjustment layers and those of you that follow my videos you probably know that I just came out with a Photoshop for photographers video where I did adjustment layers in Photoshop and it's nice now I've got these uh, two video series kinda lined up so those of you that don't know which program you want to buy or you see want to see the differences you could watch the video I just did on masking for um, layer masks that I did in Elements and the video I did in layer masks for Photoshop and you could see some of the differences and as I mentioned today we'll do the adjustment layers and you could compare what I did the adjustment layer in Photoshop and the differences. One thing I'll tell you right away the limitation is um, the quantity of adjustment layers available. In Photoshop CC and CS6 and I think CS5 there's 16 adjustment layers that I could choose from and in elements there's I think five so there's a big difference and you could get to the adjustment layers right here there's this circle and it's half dark and half light you just click on that and a little drop down appears the first three adjustments are fill layers we're not going to cover those today the next five are adjustment layers and the next three are effects so we're going to do you know I'm going to do maybe three of these um, five today and eventually I'll cover them all but once you know how to do one you'll know how to do all of them they all operate the same way the nice thing oh, one thing I should add if you don't want to hit that little circle there you could go up to layer new adjustment layer and there they are right there too one nice thing about adjustment layers is they're um, actual a, a layer that goes on top of the layer stack and it doesn't mess with any pixels so if you make a mistake or you decide you don't like it you could just take that adjustment layer grab it and throw it up into this trash can right here and you know and start over again or get a different adjustment layer so that's the neat thing it doesn't mess with any pixels but with that said it's always a good habit to duplicate your background layer anyway that way if you you know you did some adjustment layers and you decided you didn't want them or something you don't forget later and you might do an effect later that actually messes with pixels you don't want to you don't want to do any work on the actual background because if you make a mistake it's destructive if you copy it by hitting command J or control J if you have a PC if you copy it and I do some work on this background copy and I make a mistake or I don't like it I could just grab that throw it in the trash can and I didn't uh, do anything to the background layer I've mentioned that before but it's worth mentioning again command J with a Mac control J with a PC and duplicate it the second thing I like to do before I start I like to fill the work area with the uh, photograph and uh, the fastest way to do that is hit command or control zero and it will fill the work area with the shot all right okay now we're gonna add some adjustment layers what we're gonna do is we're gonna turn this photo into a black and white photo and I did this exact same photo in the Photoshop videos and I used uh, three different um, to do adjustments I used three different adjustment layers none of those three are available in elements but I'm gonna do pretty much the same thing with what we have available to us so we're gonna go up to this um, circle with that's you know half dark half white and the first thing I'm gonna do is use saturation and you're presented right away with a drop out drop down uh, menu that has the channels and of course it has you know red yellow green cyan blues ma uh, magentas and master master whatever adjustments you do will affect the entire picture and all the colors in the picture in this case I want to just mess with the yellows first what you'll find you know grass is green except when you're in Photoshop grass the yellow slider affects grass more than the green slider usually so what I want to do is I want to turn saturation up now I'm gonna adjust this photograph not necessarily to make it pleasing to the eye as a color photograph it's been my experience that if I make the colors rather over 
saturated and over bright it comes out better when it's translated into black and white okay. it's just the contrast I think of grays is better so I'm turning saturation up quite a bit and I'm going to turn the lightness up just a touch okay next I'm gonna to go to the greens and I think I'll turn saturation up a touch but I'm gonna bring lightness down a little and you see it doesn't do a lot you can see a tiny bit especially up here more in the foreground making it a little darker so we kinda of made this path a little more prominent we made a little more bright area back in here so when we translate that to the black and white the the it won't be all uniform gray it'll have some uh, different shades of gray next thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go to the blues for the sky and I'm just gonna darken it down again a bit by taking this lightness slider and sliding it to the left so to darken the blues down a little bit again when that becomes black and white it'll be a darker gray to contrast nicely against the white clouds okay so I'm done with the U saturation layer I could uh, adjustment layer I could just click that little X now as you can see it's just an adjustment layer on top of your layer stack if for any reason I don't like this I could just I could just grab it and throw it in the trash can and it's gone okay now I'm not gonna do it again I could undo what I just did by hitting command or control Z as in zebra and it will just it's an undo command you also could get that up here edit undo okay so commander control Z I'm back where I uh, left off now I'm gonna add another adjustment layer and I'm gonna turn it black and white now and in Photoshop we had a black and white adjustment layer here we don't but we have gradient map and that will do the same thing and as you can see it made it into this kind of weird negative look but all we have to do is click reverse and it makes it black and white um, you, if you drop down here you'll see there's all these different gradients you could you could do you could all these do these really you know odd effects but we're just gonna stick with the uh, black and white gradient and as you can see now it's backwards because I had reverse on to begin with but that's you know you just want it to look like this that's fine you might have to have that box checked is what I'm trying to say and don't worry nothing's broken if you do okay so there's no other really adjustments um, dither just if you had um, sharp edges uh, if you had a sign with letters it helps smooth it out a little bit if you click dither okay so we're done with that adjustment layer now it's very flat I want to add some contrast so I'm gonna hit this again and I'm gonna go to brightness contrast adjustment layer and I you know some people don't like a lot of contrast they like a very kind of flat black and white so you could turn it down if you do but I, I want some contrast so I'm gonna turn it up and then now it's a little too bright so I'm gonna turn brightness down okay now that's that's pleasing to my eye but you could see now when I added those that um, kind of garish bright yellow how it made this part a lot brighter and it added made this path brighter and when I brought the greens down it added some dark up here in the foreground so that is what I was going for I wanted this to be you know have some texture to it some varying uh, levels of gray so in that case I would say mission is accomplished now if I didn't like it it's easy enough to go back to it I could just uh, double click on the adjustment layer that I want to adjust I could go back to let's say the yellows remember I turned the saturation up quite a bit I could bring my saturation down or I could bring it up a little higher or you know I could just adjust readjust what I had adjusted earlier and you could go back and forth you know I could go back to the um, the brightness layer and I could um, adjust contrast or brightness if I wanted to or readjust I should say and that's it I mean that's really adjustment layers are pretty cool and um, you know help you modify your photograph uh, to come up with some very interesting effects or you know turn a color shot into a black and white relatively easily easy now as you know that watch my Photoshop video I gave this exact file away um, for you that want to practice uh, you could use this file and I'll have it available on my website what in the description if you're watching this on YouTube in the description I'll have a link 
where you could go to my website and grab the file and use it for your own personal use to you know practice. Now, if you already downloaded the file for the Photoshop, um, you know, class or you know lesson or episode that we did, that file will not work in Elements. That's another limitation of Photoshop Elements. It only will read 8-bit TIFF files. That was a 16-bit TIFF file, which Photoshop can handle. So you have to re-download this for um, Photoshop Elements. You can actually use that other file. It, elements will load it, and it will sit here as a layer, but you won't be able to do anything to it. If you double-click on it, then um, Elements is going to ask you if you want to convert it to 8-bit, and then you just say yes, and it will convert it to 8-bit. But I'll have it available, as I mentioned, to download. Just look down in the description. You could grab it. All right, that's it for this lesson. I want to thank everyone uh, for watching, and I'd like to thank everyone who has subscribed to my YouTube channel. It's been crazy. A lot of people, I mean, hundreds of people a day, I've been getting subscribed, subscrip or you know what I'm trying to say. And if you uh, hadn't already subscribed, I'd appreciate it if you did. And that's it. I'll talk to you guys soon.